so I'm going to talk about the linked open data and give some background. Um, we have an activity in the current PSA to um, the aim is to create a better support for datex in the open data field slash community. And we have got requests from the open data community, those who works in this, that area, uh, that we should publish our datex definitions in a, in a form that they are used to use in that uh, context. So this is an ongoing work. Um, so this will change, uh, not so much, but know that it, it is this ongoing work. Um, so what is linked open data? Uh, linked data is one of the core pillars of a semantic web, also known as the web of data. The semantic web is about making links between data sets that are understandable, not only to humans, but also to machines. And the linked data provides the best practices for making these things possible. In other words, the linked data is a set of design principles for sharing machine readable interlinked data on the web. So machine readable is a key thing here and linking between data. Uh, open in this sense, <coughs> it comes from open data, which can be freely used and distributed by anyone. So linked open data is when you combine linked data with open data, nothing more than that. Um, I give one example that you probably have seen in the real world several times <coughs> where this is actually used. If you search for a product on Google, like I have done here, I'll search for buy tea. Uh, I got some products at the top um, with price and picture and description and where I can actually buy this. They come from different sources. And what they have done on those websites is that they have tagged their data and um, in a machine readable way, uh, telling what a price is, what the image is. And that makes when the Google index these pages, he understands and can um, from that data produce a common view about this data and present to you when you search for data or search for products. Yeah, so this is a very typical use of uh, open link data and structured data. Uh, I'm going to show now what we are what we're do, trying to do with a datex in this world. And I take a very simple, very, very simplified example. Uh, this is a very stripped uh, HTML page, a web page. Uh, it's, the result is actually this. It's a title, vehicle obstruction, it's a date time, and it says broken down vehicle. This is for human probably a little bit understandable, but for a machine, this is uh, more difficult uh, because it's just text. And in, in English, it's one thing, and in uh, Swedish, we probably have displayed something else. Uh, but if we add some data to this, uh, some structured data uh, that I have done now in this example, um, and here I added a JSON LD script. Um, the script is not visible for a human, but for a machine it is. Uh, so here we tag the data, you could say. Uh, so I say here that the context is from datex.eu vocab slash three situation. So this is the situation namespace. And I can say that the type I'm trying to describe here is a vehicle obstruction. And I also tell an uh, vehicle obstruction type, that's an attribute on this class, that this is a broken down vehicle. And for the date, I say that this attributes that is used is situation record creation time. And then I have the date time here. So in this way, we, for a machine, we have tell a lot more than just this unstructured text. Uh, so what we do in a more overview, well, but today we have the UML model, our rich, Datex to UML model that is still growing. Um, from that, we're creating XML schemas. 
in XSD. And the normal exchange format today is XML between two organizations. So in this context, this is how we do it. Uh, and then we start publishing data somewhere in a web page. And this is where this things comes in um, that I just show you in the example. So what we're doing now is that from this UML model, we create a Datex vocabulary that is uh, today have chosen to use JSON LD as a format, which is an RDF format. It's a serialization format of RDF, which is what is used in that community to link uh, and tag data. Uh, it's very similar, or, or it's similar thing, the schema and the JSON LD, but they are used in different contexts. Um, so for them, what they said, this should be very valuable if we publish our rich UML model in a format that they can use. Otherwise, there will be someone else creating definitions for this domain. Um, I also add one other thing that is an ongoing similar thing, um, but not the same as we do. It's we have the national access points which publish um, information, metadata about the services and the data sets that are available. And for that, there is an ongoing project to, and we'll continue in the NAPCOR project, to create an, an, an standard or specification called NAPDCAT-AP, which is uh, a RDF there as well, creating more the same thing as we are doing here uh, for Datex, but in this case, they're describing the data and the services more than we with Datis describes the real content. So we don't overlap each other, you can say. Okay, the current status. As I said, this is an ongoing activity. We have a draft mapping document uh, describing a mapping from the UML model to JSON LD that would include classes, attributes, and relations between classes. It will not be complete what we have in the UML model and in XML, but it should be what is needed in this domain. Um, so we, by that, when we, uh, when we have updated the tools, so we can create this Datex vocabulary in JSON LD format uh, by generating it from the UML model. And for that, we have drafts available uh, in JSON LD format. And the plan is that it should be ready in April. And since we are now 21th of April, it's not that many days left, but um, there is a review going on this week by experts from the open data community. So I think and hope that this should be published end of April at datix2.eu. But already today, there are drafts of the JSON-LD documents published on Datix2 website or Datix2 URLs. So if you look at these ones, you actually get the JSON-LD documents or JSON-LD draft documents. Um, and just short, what is it JSON-LD? Well, there's first a context describing other standards that we use mostly. Um, and then we have all the definitions of, for example, here we have a de definition of, comma, of a Boolean value so that we can reference it from different web pages in a simplified form. So this is uh, rather huge documents, but machines should read those. So not humans. So that's all I have to present for this today.